work to uh, affect social change. All right, so Peter, you heard, is a writer producer on House, and we're going to see the clip from House, and then we'll hear from Peter. Two pallets of antibiotics for tuberculosis. We've got six pallets worth of patients. So hey, Tucker needs a math lesson. I'm headed back tomorrow. Sebastian, come quickly. My son, he fell. He fell on this rock. We were just waiting for his friends. The Homer, the Guambio is just a hooko. I got no breath sounds on the left. Give me that. Yeah, he's gonna be okay. The fall didn't cause him to drop a lung. The lung caused him to fall. TB chewed it up. He'll be lucky to live another year. Well, this is Sarney. Uh, I picked up the tab for the back brace myself. The funny thing is, is that the brace costs more than the medicine that would have prevented her from needing it. It's your medicine. All of the antibiotics that we need are right here in your warehouses in your factories. We provide over 10,000 doses a year. Wh which is not enough. You know we'd love to do more, but our hands are tied. New car, Jerry? I saw it on the way in, looks beautiful. Don't make this personal. All the way from Germany, too. I know that's a lot of red tape. I'm not like you. I'm not ashamed of making a living. And I know you didn't become a chem major for the money. Now, you want the same things that I want. You just, you have to, you just have to push a little, you have to push a little bit harder. Harder for it. Sebastian? Call 911. Okay, okay. Isn't someone here a doctor? There's nothing there. Yeah, there is. Did I ask you to plant a PBD? It was positive. He's got TB. Well, of course he's got TB. The guy's been in the jungle for 20 years. It's all preventable. Stoya Tucker makes medications right here in New Jersey. They have warehouses full of the stuff. There's more than enough to go around. So if I can get them, why can't Lil? Why can't Quismo? Why can't Sarni? Another person just died. Where is your outrage? So, Peter, please uh, tell us about. Uh... So that that um, that clip was uh, from an episode uh, that was written by uh, David Foster, who is uh, our writer, who's also a doctor. And um, it, uh, we chose it because it's the, it's the episode of our show which, is most, um, which most clearly addresses global health issues. We, um, we use a lot of, we, we refer to a lot of diseases in our show. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's a medical mystery show, basically. Um, and um, um, every week someone comes in with a strange disease and we don't know what it is and we end up solving it by the end. Um, the... Um, but most of the time, we use we use diseases uh, just simply to make the mystery interesting. We're really trying to service the story more than anything else. Um, but this episode, David really wanted to uh, talk about public health. Um, he the uh, the contrast he wanted 
to show by using this uh, this doctor as as the guy who got sick was um, the contrast between a global public health expert who basically knows that three million kids are going to die and they're all going to die of tuberculosis. And it's really a question of treatment. What do we do about it? How do we get the, uh, the medicines to them on the one hand? And on the other hand, I don't know what you'd call it, a, a private, a personal health um, approach that Dr. House takes. Um, House is a doctor who has one patient per week, basically. It's a really strange case. and You spend all your time on it. It's not realistic in today's uh in uh the way the medical system works today it's it's the way a lot of doctors would love to have it where you spend all your time really focusing on one uh patient and making sure you've treated them right unfortunately doctors don't really have the uh, the time to do that right now but um that's that's the basic contrast david wanted to show where house gets obsessed with this mystery thinking this might not be tuberculosis that's killing him, whereas uh, this guy who's a TB expert is sure that his TB is killing him and he takes a big political stance. Um, so that's, that's basically why we chose this. But in general on our show, um, when we use global diseases, um, we're using them for a very specific purpose. I'll just give you one other example. There was an um, episode that... Uh, Russ Friend and Garrett Lerner, who are two of our writers, uh, wrote in which um, they wanted to have one of our doctors accidentally cause the death of a patient they were treating because they'd heard of an actual case where a doctor forgot to supervise a patient while he was taking a cup, uh, while he was taking the pills to treat his disease. The patient actually dropped the pills on the floor. Um, and because of that, the doctors thought, oh, well, this can't be the disease we thought it was because, um, because the pills aren't working. So they treated for a number of other diseases and the guy died. And it was all because they just didn't know that, you know, this guy had not taken his pills and they found the pills later. So they were looking for a disease that was easy to diagnose, um, and easy to treat. And they found this, um, this infection called strongyloides, which you can get from like walking on the beach in Thailand, I think. And um, we used that. The patient didn't take the pills. It, w it was easy to diagnose, easy to treat, but they didn't supervise the patient. The patient died. And it's in that way we generally use uh, global health topics on the show. So, Peter, do you think that it's a responsibility of a TV show to, to especially a medical series, because yours is the only one on with grays and private practice, but, but you're very disease-oriented. Um, do you think it's the responsibility of a, sh of, a, of a series, a medical series, or not to, to grapple with these issues? Well, we obviously wouldn't, um, wouldn't try to do anything that would give uh, uh, misinformation about any public health topic. Um, and in fact, our showrunner, David Shore, heard its speech about malaria and wants us to write an episode about malaria. Um, but in general, we also feel, you know, we have like a lot of responsibility just to telling a good story. So um, uh, that that's really what we're focused on. But, you know, in our show, there's no downside to using uh, some sort of global disease. I mean, the only specific downside, downside for our show is that once you know that the patient has tra has you know traveled to um, some one specific area in Africa. It's easy to narrow down what the diseases are, and since we're a medical a medical mystery show, we have to then end up hiding his travel for whatever reason. Thanks. All right, so now we'll move on to uh, David Harden, and uh, we'll show a clip from Numbers. What the hell happened down here? It's like some kind of nightmare. Hey, okay, all right, all right. Take it easy. Hey, we're with the FBI. You're okay. Huh? It's, it's okay. We're with the... And you were all here to sell your kidney? A man came to our village, promised us each $1,000. There's an area outside of Chennai. It's called Kidney Village. So you're saying there's regular traffic in human organs? There are over 80,000 people on the transplant waiting list in this country, and every day 17 of them die waiting. Without a new kidney, my father will die. 
he has a blood disorder that disqualifies him from getting a transplant. The last person who received a transplant from these people died a few hours ago of a massive infection. He told me that I need to be ready to pick him up, to take him to the hospital. From where and when? At a hotel. Tomorrow. What were you doing at the DMV? Well, I'm now officially an organ donor. Check it out. Hey, look at that. Hey. What cool. Nice, huh? All right, so now I get treated with a little more respect around here, huh? <laughs> you know, if more people took that simple step, can you imagine the ramifications? Well, basic economic theory, black markets rely on a shortage of a regulated commodity. That's right. Increase the supply, the black market disappears. Well, here's a couple extra applications in case anyone wants. Well, that's all right. I already got my sticker. Yeah, look, I've been an organ donor for years. So. Yeah, me too. David, please. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to thank Dr. Yamada not only for a, a really interesting presentation, but also, if I may borrow it, imperfect tools, imperfectly applied, my career in Hollywood. I think that's the <laughs> right title for my new forthcoming autobiography. Um, and thanks to Sandra, too, for calling me distinguished. That almost <laughs> never happens. So <clears throat> the story behind Harvest, um, I'd come across an article in the Christian Science Monitor about this um, transplant tourism, this global trade in, in black market organs. And for, for a variety of reasons, you know, it was, it was because to anticipate being asked the same question um, that, that Neil asked Peter, um, you know, it has to be entertaining first. And there was something about it that, was, that seemed exciting and interesting to me. We also had a, uh, an Indian actor on the show that we badly underutilized, and she was very good and very pretty. Um, and it was an excuse to address the Scott Brothers note um, to the show, um, who were executive producer of the show, who said, why don't you use the Indian girl more? <laughs> um, so I saw it as an opportunity to do that and, and a number of other things. And I went in to pitch it to the, the showrunner. I assume it's a Hollywood crowd, so you guys may not know, but the showrunner is the guy who runs the show. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, we're writers. <laughs> we come up with clever titles for things. Um, so I went in to pitch the, the, the idea to, to the showrunner, and he was immediately interested, immediately excited. You know, the air in my balloon is inflating. And then he said, but would this happen in L.A.? And there was a pregnant pause while all of the air rushed out of my balloon. Um, because the show was about an FBI agent and his um, little brother, who's a math genius. So you know, to, to serve the stories on this show, you had to have a good, interesting, cool crime that you could solve with math, which is harder than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he said, and I said, no, I, I don't think that it would happen in Los Angeles. I think it's very unlikely, but it does happen. And people from Los Angeles might go to Eastern Europe, or they might go to South Africa to do this. Um, so it doesn't seem like a big poetic license to, to move it here. And he said, OK, fine, under one condition. By the time we, we air this episode, you and I will know how to do one. Now, I don't know if you listened to my introduction before, but I'm not a doctor. And the last biology I had was probably in ninth grade. So I made an immediate and panicked call to the Hollywood Health um, folks who'd um, been by the show to, to present a couple of times. And I said, I need to know how to do a kidney transplant in a hotel room in downtown Los Angeles. And I need to, to know now. <clears throat> So not only did they arrange um, for, for me to speak to a number of, of nephrologists who walked me through the process so that we actually did represent